This is How to Study for Psychology, brought to you by the Learning Center. I'm Juanita Tapia Brewer, an academic coach. I'm Jaya, and I'm the psychology tutor at the Learning Center. A little overview of the Learning Center and the services we offer are on-campus tutoring, when campus is open, online tutoring, Roads to Success presentations, which can be found on the Learning Center website, college success course, and academic coaching. The objectives of today's presentation is by the end of this workshop, you should be able to understand the importance of the study cycle in relation to learning, to identify specific active learning strategies applicable to your specific area of study and feel prepared to apply these strategies to your own coursework. So the study cycle is something that we're gonna be going through today and it has five steps. Those five steps are preview, attend, review, study, and assess. So the first step is preview. And that means to pre-read material before class, skim the chapters, review summaries and chapter objectives, write down any questions you want to be answered in class. And it's always important to check your syllabus to see what materials will be covered that week in class. Why do we do this? Well, you'll be, you'll be much better prepared to learn new concepts when they come up if you have already introduced them to your brain once before. So for psychology specifically, this might uh, be skimming any readings or handouts that your professor assigned or recommended. Also um, looking through notes from previous lectures, um, skimming the textbooks and articles for a quick refresh. And in the beginning of the term, I also like to check the syllabus and just write down everything on my planner so I know when things are due. But throughout the term, I also like to check my syllabus to make sure that I'm on the right track and that I know what I need to be working towards. The next step in the study cycle is to attend, attend class. Go to class, ask questions, participate in discussions and activities. Right now, some specific remote learning tips are Turn your camera on and choose speaker view to stay engaged. Use the chat or raise hand function for questions. And this is important because it can be hard to stay engaged over Zoom, but actively engaging with the material being discussed will help with understanding and retaining the material. So for psychology, um, you I know there will be a lot of reading material and um, a lot of information presented in the lecture. So it's important that you attend lecture and you might write that in your planner to schedule down the time that you'll be attending for the lecture to remind yourself. The next step in the study cycle is to review. Try to review the material within 24 hours. Reread and rework your notes if necessary. Identify any gaps in comprehension. Make note of any lingering questions. Consider your learning style as well when choosing a note-taking system that will work for you. This is important because studies show that reviewing notes within a few hours after class considerably increases retention and understanding. This is a, a graph of the typical forgetting curve for newly learned information. So the first day you learn something, it's in your head 100%. But as each day goes on, you lose a lot of that information. And by probably day 10, a lot of that will be, if not all the way gone. So it's important to retain that information by reviewing every couple of days just to make sure that you keep that in there and are able to use it for future classes and tests. Um, these are the four main learning styles. 
And it's important to know your learning style so you can know which way to best study. So the first learning style is visual graphic. So you might draw concepts, use a whiteboard, synthesize info into symbols and images. The next one is visual text. Use lists, rewrite ideas and concepts, create and answer test questions. Auditory, talk through material, give mini lectures, consider not taking notes so you can actually listen. And the last is kinesthetic. You use your senses, you make it personal and be physically active while learning. Um, these are some note-taking strategies. So for a more visual learner, the visual graphic learner might find mind mapping a good way to take notes because you're able to really draw out each concept, each key term, and really connect the dots and um, be really physical with, with um, the note taking, not just writing it out. But for somebody who enjoys writing it out and needs a more structured look for their notes, Cornell Notes is a good way to structure your notes as well because you're able to put key terms on one side and write definitions on the other. And then at the end, make a summary, which is great for reviewing in the future because you already have it summarized. You already have your whole note page summarized. So you can just go back and review the summaries. And here's an example of mind mapping um, for a psychology um, concept, the cognitive information processing theory. So as you can see that um, just by looking at this mind mapping, you're able to see that memory and executive process are part of it and those subdivide into different other terminologies and phenomena. So uh, mind mapping is my favorite way for psychology to take notes just because there's a lot of vocab words and it helps me tie all those vocab words into the bigger main concept. So the next step in the study cycle is to study. Try to make any passive strategies into active ones. And those are important because repetition is key. And also taking practice tests is an active way to study and using provided study guides or making your own. Another tip is to not study alone if you can. Form study groups over Zoom with classmates. Check in with the professor during office hours at least once a term. And this is important because exams are focused on output. So it's important to practice processing information that way. Working with others can also help to clear up confusion and not to mention most people are looking for more ways to connect with each other right now. Active study strategies. First, I'm gonna say what some passive strategies are. So passive strategies are focused on input. And those are reading, listening to a lecture and watching a video. But active strategies are focused on output. They are anything that allows you to produce content. And that is taking a practice test, creating note cards and studying with a friend or tutor. For psychology, I especially like to make flashcards for the vocabulary terms and quiz myself um, throughout the week, not just once and putting it aside because like the learning curve that we looked at, it's easy to retain information right when you learn it, but then uh, we tend to forget that information as the day goes by. And also um, another idea is to make a Kahoot quiz and play and invite others in the classroom to join. This could be like a fun social event with incorporating um, studying along with that. And you can also try teaching the learned concepts to other students or family members. This helps you 
test whether you know all the information and where gaps in knowledge exist. And most importantly, take practice exams and quizzes to assess yourself. So the next step in the study cycle is to assess. Periodically check in with yourself. What's working? What could be changed or improved? Look over any missed questions on tests or quizzes. And also organize your study time. Reflect on your system for self-management. Consider structuring study, set, study sessions. This is important because by checking in with ourselves, we're able to recognize which areas are strengths and which are growth areas. Organizing your time can help with this by reducing stress and keeping you on track for achieving your goals. And this is an example of structuring a study session. There's kind of four steps to this structure of a study session. The first one is to set a goal. For one to two minutes before studying, decide what you want to accomplish in this study session. For example, how many pages or chapters do you want to read? How many problems do you have to answer? And then the next step is to study with focus. For 30 to 50 minutes, really interact with the material and active ways. Use your active study strategies. And the third step is to reward yourself. For 10 to 15 minutes, take a break. And that could be taking a walk, grabbing a snack, grabbing a coffee, and just stepping away from your computer or study space. And the final step is to review. Five minutes, just go over what you just studied and then return to your goal. Did you accomplish your goal? Why or why not? For psychology, I like to start the study session with a plan of action. So what are the assignments that you need to work on? Is there an upcoming quiz to study for and what you need to prioritize at this moment? And then um, taking notes, making note cards or um, creating a quizlet to actively study and engage with the coursework is important and review the work that you just did. And don't forget to reward yourself with a break. So what we just went over in this presentation was the study cycle. Step one was preview. Step two was attend. Step three was review. Step four was study. And step five was assess. If you want more support, you're always welcome to meet with an academic coach or tutor, and we can help with self-management, study strategies, motivation, and more. To book an academic coaching appointment, you can visit our website on the Learning Center, at the Learning Center, and read our coaches' bios, and you can schedule a coaching session using the coaches' individual You Can Book Me links. To schedule a tutoring appointment, you can download the Penji app to view each tutor's live availability and schedule through the app.